Yeah, yeah. Now that's why we call it early though. That means everybody ain't real like you, you feel me? You can wear that. <laughs> Cause I came from nothing, and when I say came from nothing, I mean came from nothing. I mean a lot of people said, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> a lot of people said, man. You know, but we did the trailer park, we did the project, you know what I'm saying? We, I slept with a crown big for that in three months, my nigga, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So when I say it, I say it, I mean it, you know what I'm saying? I mean it, my nigga. Uh, uh, uh. I don't know. Uh, do we have it? Do we have it? Um, and real quick, Hello. while we're looking for headphones, this is Mike Caesar. Um, Mike, this is Devin, Angel, Cassidy. Yo, I am. Good. What's up, Mike Caesar? Welcome to the Jake Kennedy Show. <laughs> we'll try to do this without headphones. I mean, you can hear us okay, I guess. So, right, right. Yeah, right. So. I'm, a, I'm about your hat right now. I'm just going to go ahead and point that out. Yeah, yeah, it's another of bucket that's over him. He has a leather bucket hat on. Makes the most of my leather bucket hat, ladies and gentlemen. Hey! Yeah, I'm going to switch headphones on anybody. Yeah, thanks, man. Yeah. Um, well, one reason I want to bring Mike on is. Um, I was introduced to your music over a year ago. I think you did a, you did a kind of um, what what's your foundation in college? You started the Weight Foundation. That you were kind of working. You were working on it, and it, some things went wrong because yeah, of, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, um, the Weight Foundation, W A I T, uh -huh. stands for We're All In Together. Yeah. Um, mental health awareness and uh, domestic violence. Is yeah. What we're Specifically, right? Yeah. 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 And um, I think that's a huge uh, unspoken about issue in today's society. It's one of those things that, not just today's, I think it's something that's been swept under the rug for a long, long time. And um, and it's sometimes it's something that people just accept as a reality or whatever nonsense they're doing to uh, justify it. Um, to, uh, we're jamming out. We're jamming out. Sometimes things are coming out. But, um, but one thing that we, I met you one day and we sat down and chatted for a bit and you kind of, you, you're, you're open and honest about it on with the weight thing, about your, your struggle with being bipolar. And, and what I really want to talk to you about, maybe have you expound on a little bit, is how you use music and how you've used, um, you know, telling stories and and that kind of stuff through your music to cope with and you know ultimately evolve as yourself. Because when I listen to your music and I meet you, it's kind of like what we were talking about with Richie Flo um, and really Microphone Lewis and some of these rappers that I do know. Um, their music is very just out there to an extent, it's you know, it's, it's in your face, it can be considered vulgar, it can be considered a lot of different things. Um, but it's kind of like, you know, back in the 90s, late 90s, that's what NWA did. And they really did it. What they were able to do back then is flip it and make it art. And they were able, not only that, they made it social awareness as well. And I don't, I don't think, you know, I, now that the movies come out, like everybody's like, oh, they did all this stuff. And it's like, but yeah, if you follow the thing and you know what's going on, you know, you knew that 10 years ago, 15 years, that's not news to nobody. Um, I do think that the problem is, though, or an issue we're having has always been the problem is kids or people watch this stuff and like, well, look how cool that is. It's such an exciting lifestyle. They're rapping and being gangsters. It's just blah, blah, blah. It's, and it's nonsense, man. Because you know, I think the reason that folks that have lived a, a lifestyle that's been tumultuous want to talk about these things, at least the way they got, the reason the guys did it back then was to expose it. You know, to show it for the nonsense that it is. So. Definitely applaud you for being real on your music with that, and then obviously in your real life, you know, not walking around. You, you made a post yesterday about, I can't, I'm not even going to try to say what all it said, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, it's, 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 it's honestly, man, like, like it's a lot of, I'm going to touch on a lot of stuff you said. First of all, with being, with, with, with music, right? I use my music as a form of therapy. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> basically... I'm, I'm a type 2 bipolar. It's, it's a more mild, I guess they would say. Um, yeah. But it's type 2. It's not it's not type 1 as a person. It's not so. personal, personal, personal personality. It's not that far. It's just very good. Um, well, well, yeah. Basically, it's the difference. Um, type 1 is kind of like mania. It's more extreme. Mm -hmm. Type 2 is more um, mood driven. It's up and down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, if, if you were to put it in language terms. Okay. So, um, basically... The medicine was too expensive, of course. and the stigma was too embarrassing. Yeah. Um, that's what happened once we found out what was wrong with, with me. Yeah, person. So, um, music and writing was a therapy. Yeah, a form, a form of therapy. Um, 
That's what, so a lot of times when I write things or even in songs, a lot of times I'm too honest. Yeah, but well, it, again, it's no a form, thing, but yeah. yeah, but it's a form of therapy. And what people always have to keep in mind is sometimes you forget when you when you hear things from artists and when we speak, it's perspective. Yeah. And it's, this is the way I see it. You right. know what I mean? So anything that a person speaks on, but specifically artists, is always going to be perspective. So yeah. you may, you're not really disagreeing with what a person may say because a lot of times yeah. you and I get into debates yeah. and then once we get to the point of what we're saying, we honestly were saying the same thing. No, that, well that's the most maddening thing about Facebook debates yeah. these days is because like, yeah, they're all just turned back on themselves and you're like, okay, we all agree. All right, yeah, cool. yeah we're, we're, we're saying the same thing, so it's kind of like, we just really just wasted a bunch of time disagreeing. <laughs> you know what I mean? But yeah. we were saying the same thing, it's just perspective. So I, I disagree with the way you said what you said. Mm -hmm. Is that really worth because we're, we're fighting the same fight, 100%. so, you know, does it really matter how you want, what road you want to take to Austin? 35 or the back road? We're, we're trying to go the same road. I'm place. taking the back road, man. It's you know what I mean? <laughs> so, it, you know, it comes from that. So, I have to speak on things in my mind. First right. of all, um, just, just being totally honest, being a black male, mm -hmm. being a black male with a mental illness, and then I'm a Haitian black male, you have to, I have to speak on it. I feel like it's just a, yeah, a, yeah. a moral responsibility that I have to speak on it, especially having a fan base on a platform. Of course, yeah. I absolutely have to speak on that. Yeah. Um, I wasn't comfortable speaking with mental illness because at first I wasn't because, like I said, it was just kind of embarrassing, just to be honest. Yeah. You didn't want people to think a certain way of you and then People oftentimes treat me being bipolar, or if it comes up, they, they kind of look at it like it's an excuse sometimes. Yeah. Because I can't be a, a, a bit of an a-hole, you, know? <laughs> you know what I mean? But, you know, I'm kind of aggressive, but I, I don't know how much of it is me being bipolar and just me just being aggravated easily. Yeah. So, you, you know, a lot of times people treat that as an excuse. So a lot of times I didn't want to bring it up or speak on it. But I would meet people who were bipolar mm -hmm. and they were ashamed to speak on it or they were actually diagnosed but they don't want people to know. You have some kind of mental illness or schizophrenia, uh, some kind of mild, what yeah. people would call them a tick. Yeah. It, and yeah. it, it really would break my heart. Or just crazy, you know, whatever. You know, but it, it, it would break my heart that people would say that they were ashamed to say that. And these are like some of the most normal people I meet, people I actually care about. And you're ashamed to be yourself. Mm -hmm. And then I thought about it, I was like, well, you know, in my circle, hence the Caesar on my name, I'm more of a leader in our circle. And I'm one of the most effed up of all of us. You know what I mean? So, you so know, it works what? sometimes. Yeah, you know what I mean? So, you know what? Okay, everybody, this is what's wrong with me. And we're just going to tell all, you know, 100, 200,000 of my fans or whatever, we're going to tell everybody about it. I'm going to do a foundation, we're going to do, uh, you know, podcast interviews, we're going to tell everybody that I'm type 2 bipolar, and it's okay, yeah. you know, and then, so what's wrong with you? I'm this, you know, I'm a homosexual, I'm schizophrenia, I'm just an a-hole, whatever. Okay, that's okay, just be who, who you are, though, and be comfortable with that, and we're not going to care what anyone thinks about right. us as people. You just have to be a good person within how effed up you are as a person. Yeah. <laughs> be a good person behind it. That's, well, that's a good way to kind of uh, it. explain it, yeah, as being a good person in what you're, because, yeah, I mean, it's, to me, I don't, I don't like, like, calling people by labels, because I've seen the way it's destroyed people in my life, because then they attach themselves to this label, and they're like, well, I'm this, and it's like, yeah. You know, you're much more than that. Like, yeah. you're, you're not that, you know, and... Well, and with the rampant self-diagnosis that is yeah, happening these days, yeah. I think that's where a lot of the um, doubt or, um, I mean, just flippant yeah. manner... That's one of the most annoying it's things in the world. It's hurtful. When people say that, like, they have a mood swing or, 
you know, whatever they're going through, and just, oh my God, I think I'm bipolar. Like, that really pisses me off. Mm -hmm. That's the worst thing. Yeah. Totally yeah. stuff. I was going to say, to touch on what you said, RJ, you know, sometimes those labels, and by the way, I am your sister, also fellow diagnosed <laughs> bipolar <laughs> disorder. Um, number two, yeah, right? Number two, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, but some people can, like to touch on what Cassie was saying, RJ, as well, is like some people can take that and say, well, because I have this label, like you were saying, um, now I can't overcome these things because right. this is just me. Yeah. I'm just bipolar. I'm just bipolar. I'm just bipolar. I'm bipolar. I can't, yeah. yeah, I can't deal with that. I can't deal with this. I can't deal with that. And it's like, we can't let, you know, if anything, like, that makes us just more magical. And we just yeah, need to use you know. that. Well, I think that you, like said, you kind of hit it on the head as far as you can't use that as an excuse to be an asshole. Like you, gotta, you gotta, you still gotta apologize if you fuck up, if you do something wrong. Yeah, okay, let's. We can curse. Or for not trying. Yeah, we can curse. Oh, we can curse. Yes. The time. No, no, we're not. <laughs> no. This is a free space, man. <laughs> we don't it was funny because I was like, man, he's like really respectful. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, we can curse all you want, but um, well, and I think especially why one reason I wanted to bring you on specifically is because because yes, curses. <laughs> yeah, because he curses. Because I love hearing the people curse. Yeah, love it. Man. Uh, no, but from from the, a black man's perspective, who obviously, like yourself, has very very strong beliefs and strong convictions yourself as a person. Um, but yeah, get your view on it. Because I think that I'm, another thing that a, a lot of, and you can probably tell me if I'm right or wrong on this, that number one, mental illness is kind of the new black to an extent. Like the whole, it's like it's everybody is. If you're mentally ill, you're going to be. Stigmatized. I know it's a it's a more so, so I'm, I just fucked that up. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get skewed. Let me let me explain. Angel, you know, I, 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 I know you know, so I, I, I know what you mean. You know what yeah, I mean. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, I, don't. Don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. Let me back it up. Like, what he, what he's up. saying is. Uh, it's the new being, 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 black, being black was is kind of trendy to be honest, and being oh, uh, having, three, a, having a mental oh. illness is, is kind of trendy. I, I don't know. I don't, that's, that's, I don't, not, that's not what you mean. I'm not saying trendy. That's the wrong word. What I'm saying is that ultimately the history of our nation is the past 300 years that it's still appropriate being black culture used and has been 100 percent oppressed, mm -hmm. and ultimately right now what we're seeing is the same thing in the mental health because you're seeing that creative people are being abused, are being oppressed, and are being used because they have mental illness and they're put in these boxes and they don't, there's no color, there's no creed, there's no gender, there's no nothing to shallowly label these people. So the system is gonna not have any idea how to do it, but ultimately it is all mental illness. Because creativity finds, I mean there's a, there was a great little article I read a few weeks ago and it was an African perspective on mental illness in our country and the way we treat people who are mentally ill. And they basically took it, who knows if these things are real, but it, it seemed like a pretty, pretty in-depth uh, search if it wasn't. Um, and what he said, and this is, I mean, this was, I don't know what tribe or whatever, but he was an African indigenous tribesman, you know, just like we still have in this North America. There's still shaman just in South America, same thing. And when he came into the mental institution, he's like, how are, why are y'all doing this to your people? And what he meant was, like, in their tribes, the people that can see further or are the creatives, you know, when they come into their own in that right, they're, they're, they're a lot of times, they're highly, highly respected and it's number one that like we talked about a couple times on the show. There's rites of passages in these cultures that are very, very think, 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 think. It's not like go to college, get a degree, make money. That's not their thing. It's a little bit more in depth Spiritual. than that. Yeah. Spiritual. It's, it's it's you know that's where those concepts come from. Well, milestones and actually very joint, very very way we medicate these people. And, um, so yeah, I didn't mean it as trendy by any stretch of the imagination because I don't want to uh, I don't want to lighten the cultural appropriation that goes become. on. I guess it kind of has become. What's well, that? and and before mental illness has become sort of trendy. Well, before it's good all to get it out there. Super, so. super, super. We got black the, became the, trendy. Like, murdering yeah. of black people in the streets by our <laughs> police officers over the past three years since it's become a, an issue yeah, that's like at the yeah. forefront of. It, it's been. It, which, which yes, for, yeah, for a long time, but in the past three years, it's really become or it's really been put on the forefront um, yeah. of like the of media, yeah, media. broadcasting because of like internet media pushing it because it needs to. Before be before that, it was definitely more taboo to talk about it. Say it like on social media, just put it out there and, and start and say things like that. It wasn't looked at like, oh, people are trying to start a conversation an intelligent conversation about this it was more looked at like oh we're just trying to rehash whatever it's funny to hear you say that i don't mean to cut you off no no it's, no. it's funny to hear you say that from from your perspective mm -hmm. because like you say before it was taboo right anytime it's not current in media as a black male 
as it's taboo to speak on anything that's a black issue. It's only okay as a black male for me to say anything pertaining to the mistreatment of black people when it is current in media. Once the news cycle moves on, you're supposed to shut the fuck up about all, all, all of them. And I, I can shake my head black, here. Black, and, black and people like too, white people also, but yes, as a black male, you shut the fuck up about all that black shit once the cycle, the media cycle moves on. He's been beaten up by the police before for no, absolutely no reason. I've been beaten up several times by the police for absolutely no reason. You know what I mean? Uh, three weeks ago, I had uh, the Dallas police, they actually, uh, uh, officer uh, was about to pull his gun on me. I was in a, uh, my Suburban, there's a truck that I have. I was moving, um, moving. I had a truck full of things. The truck doesn't have any air in it. It was just packed full of stuff. It was 100 degrees outside. So I got pulled over. He, they followed me for about three blocks until I was about to get on 635 and then they stopped me and pulled me over. He said he pulled me over because I had a clear tag cover on the back of my car. It's like, okay, cool, fine. Uh, yeah, that's what he pulled me over for. So it was, can I search the car? Well, no, you can't search it because I have all this shit packed in here and I know how this is gonna go. You're gonna pull all this stuff out, then I gotta put, no, you can't search the car. I'm not putting all this shit back in here. It's 100 degrees. So he and his partner went back to the car. I got out of the truck. I was about to grab a towel to wipe my face. I'm drenched in sweat. Man got up and he was about to pull his gun on me. No, you get back in the fucking truck. I was like, dude, it's hot. Myself, I'm anemic. I dehydrate fast. It's like, dude, I'm sweating like I can't overheat out here with y'all. And you're just, you just, I, I can't, I can't do it. Like what, what will happen? And he can vouch for this. I will get too hot. I will dehydrate. I will throw up. I will dry heave, and then I'll have seizures and I'll pass out. That's exactly what will happen when I dehydrate. I'm 29 years old. I know me. I'm a, a fucking expert on myself. So I, I'm trying to tell him that. The man unstrapped his gun and tell me that if you pass out, we'll just call an ambulance. Get your black ass back in the car. That's exactly, it's exactly what he said to me. He had his gun. Like, no, you cannot get a towel out this car to wipe. Just go sit down. Like, seriously, what happened to me? So, no, like it, 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 it happens every single day. I, like I said again, I'm, I was born in Florida. I grew up in Mississippi. Like this stuff happens all the time. I've been arrested for nothing, for, for absolutely nothing. Just going to jail because we want you to go to jail. In Mississippi right now, they will set up roadblocks in the middle of the day. The police will just get in the middle of the road and you have to tell them where you're going and where you're coming from and show them your ID or you go to jail. Yeah. It's local and, they on, and they only do that in poor, poor black neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. yep. And you wish you could call the police on that. <laughs> <laughs> no, and, and in the in the city where I grew up at, there's still a, a black and white. Whatever. Yeah, the, the the remains of segregation are still very visible when you drive through these towns. So um, the the whole time that you're talking, I can sit over here and I can shake my head like, oh yeah, I sympathize with you well, so hard, man. I have no yeah. fucking clue what you have no. to go through because I don't have to live that. I know this is the experiences that I've went through, but all I can say is I'm so sorry. Yeah. And to segue from from this to the mental health, which was what what my intention was. So I, I apologize. I didn't mean to 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 say you know that that it wasn't a big deal before this. And I do thank you for, for sharing your perspective, because just like, just like you said, it's interesting to hear mine, because they are two completely different perspectives. And no matter how much I try and immerse myself in the issues that we're, I, I like to think that we're all trying to fight, you know, to solve, there's no way for me to get to, to have those experiences, those unfortunate, I mean, to, to use I think a, a, euph similar. a euphemism in the, in the worst they way. They want to arrest him, they've kidnapped your ass. <laughs> Y'all are too far off. And You're prettier than me, though. Yeah. <laughs> That's different, why they tried to kidnap yeah, her. Different, 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 different intentions. Yeah, when they, when exactly. They, yeah, exactly. Uh, they kidnap black people, they don't bring us back. So I, I have a younger brother. I have a younger brother who is a bigger dude. I mean, he's not like big or anything like that, but he's not tiny like me. Um, thick neck Irish man. That's exactly what he is. And um, he's got hands like bats. He can be very scary if you uh, come walk up to him thinking that he's a scary person. He has, um, he suffers from, we find out now, that he has had Asperger's since, um, since birth, which they didn't use to diagnose things like that. We had no idea. We just thought he was 
extra fun and extra creative and just like to stay home a lot. We had no idea. Um, and then had a mental break at the age of 15 um, where his a little bit later onset schizophrenia hit and then at the age of 16 and 17 back to back um, his skull was cracked open two different times and he literally has 